For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. This month's sponsor of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is Affiliated Monitors. Founded in 2004, Affiliated Monitors provides professional, independent, integrity monitoring and ethics and compliance assessments nationally and internationally and across almost all industries. With its knowledge of effective ethics and compliance programs and cultures, Affiliated Monitors is respected for its work as the corporate monitor on matters ranging from multinational corporations to small and mid-sized companies and even individuals. Having served in over 750 monitorships, no one has more experience as an independent monitor than the team at Affiliated Monitors. For more information on how an independent monitor can help improve your company's ethics and compliance programs, visit this month's sponsor, Affiliated Monitors, at www.affiliatedmonitors.com. COSO Objectives and Principles Control Objectives The updated COSO framework retains the core definitions of internal controls, those being <clears throat> control environment, risk assessment, con- control activities, information communications, and monitoring activities. However, it built up the objectives through the introduction of 17 principles to represent fundamental concepts associated with the five components of internal controls. Together, the objectives and principles constitute the criteria which will guide companies in assessing whether the components of internal controls are present, functioning, and operating within their organization. So what are the objectives? Number one, control environment. The first of the five objectives is control environment, and it sets the tone for the implementation and operation of all other components of internal controls. It begins with the ethical commitment of senior management, oversight by those in governance, and a commitment to competent employees. What are the five principles of the control environment? They are principle number one, commitment to integrity and ethical values. What are the characteristics of this principle? First and foremost, it is that an entity must have the appropriate tone at the top for the commitment to ethics and doing business in compliance. It also means that an organization establishes standards of conduct through the creation of a code of conduct or other baseline document. The next step is to demonstrate adherence to this standard of conduct by individual employees and throughout the organization. Finally, if there are any deviations, they must be addressed by the company in a timely manner. From the auditing perspective, this requires an auditor to be able to assess if the company has met the requirements of of ethics and compliance and whether the commitment has been effectively measured going forward. Principle two, board independence and oversight. This principle requires that a company's board of directors establish oversight of a compliance function, separate and apart from the company's senior management, so that it operates independently in the compliance arena. Next, there should be compliance expertise at the board level, which allows it to actively manage its function. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, a board must actively provide oversight on all compliance control activities, risk assessment control activities, information, compliance communications, and compliance monitoring activities. Here, internal auditors must act with the board's compliance committee or a relevant committee, such as the internal audit, to determine independence. It must also be documented evidence that the board's compliance committee provides sufficient oversight of the company's compliance function. Three, principle three, structures, reporting lines, and authorities and responsibility. This may not seem as obvious, but it is critical that a compliance reporting line go up and through the board. Under this principle, you need to consider all structures of your organization and then move to define the appropriate roles of compliance responsibility. This principle requires establishment of appropriate authority within the compliance function. However, your auditors must be able to assess whether the compliance responsibilities are appropriately assigned to establish accountability. Principle four, attracting, developing, and retaining competent individuals. This principle gets into the nuts and bolts of doing compliance or operationalizing compliance. It requires that a company establish compliance policies and procedures. Next, there must be an evaluation of the effectiveness of those compliance policies and procedures, and any demonstrated shortcomings must be addressed. This principle next turns the human component of a compliance program. A company must attract, develop, and retain competent employees in the compliance function. Lastly, a company should have a demonstrable compliance succession plan in place. 
an auditor must be able to demonstrate through its compliance policies and equally its actions that a commitment <clears throat> that it has made a commitment to attracting, developing, and retaining competent persons in the compliance function and more generally employees who accept the co- company's general principle of doing business ethically and in compliance. And number five, individuals must be held accountable. This is the stick principle. A company must show that it enforces compliance accountability through its compliance structures, authorities, and responsibilities. A company must establish appropriate compliance performance metrics, incentives to do business ethically and in compliance, and finally, reward <coughs> clearly reward such persons through promotion process in an organization. Such reward is through an evaluation on appropriate compliance measures and incentives. Interestingly, a company must consider pressures that it sends through off-messaging. Finally, each employee must be evaluated in his or her compliance performance, coupled with rewards and disciplines for employee actions around compliance. This principle requires evidence that can demonstrate to an auditor there are processes in place to hold employees accountable to their compliance objectives. Conversely, if an employee does not fulfill the compliance objectives, there must be identifiable consequences. Finally, if the accountability is not effective, the internal controls should be able to identify and manage the compliance risks. Both the Board of Directors, Independence, and the Audit Committee, or the Compliance Committee as appropriate, oversight are are essential to this objective because the Compliance Committee needs to be actively engaged to be comfortable that the company has implemented internal controls under Sarbanes-Oxley 404 as required under principle number one and two. The external auditors must be able to, rather, the external auditors must be comfortable with this. Finally, there must be evidence the company has appropriate disclosure controls in place because this is essential to this objective itself. This is all tested against board independence and compliance committee oversight over those activities that management has undertaken in their engagement and conversations with their external monitor. Joel Howell has noted that structures and reporting lines Joel Howell has noted that under Principle 3, structures and reporting lines, authorities, and responsibilities are essential to the recognition of revenue. And in these internal controls or financial reporting details are those processes. There are also policies, and of course there is documentation, the authority and the documentation of judgments that are being made, the review of those uh, in responsibility for making the ultimate judgments about recognition of revenue and the recognition or timing of the revenue expenses, those all need to be in place. Under Principle 4, a business must attract and develop and then, of course, retain competent talent, particularly in the compliance arena. Of course, this is just good business as well, but it is more than simply having appropriate levels of staffing. Uh, One big reason companies have not, have said they do not have the money to invest, again, is the deep dive study and process, process improvement necessary to implement the 2013 framework, and it comes down to both a commitment level from the top and the tone at the top, these are important, and financial disclosures are critical to the ability of the investors to rely on the company's disclosure. Finally, this all ties into principle number five, which mandates that individuals being held responsible. This requires someone to document that you have made a particular judgment based upon the evidence that you've been able to accumulate, that the company has analyzed this evidence and gone through the process of comparing this to the COSO 2013 framework and to the spirit of the standard as well. Individuals are being held responsible for having done that properly. When you tie this all together, when you get back to the control environment, this is COSO principle number one, and it certainly puts it all together. So what are today's three key takeaways? Number one, what controls do you have in place to measure conduct at the top? Two, your reporting lines must be both clear and functioning, and finally, Never forget, you must pair the right personnel with the right sources. I hope you've enjoyed day 15 of one month to more effective internal controls, and I hope you'll join me tomorrow for day 16. This is Tom Fox again. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of One Month to Better Internal Controls. If you've listened to this podcast on iTunes, I would greatly appreciate it if you would rate this podcast as it would help in our rankings. Get the word out about the only one-month podcast series which enables you to design, implement, and enhance a better compliance program. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at tfox at tfoxlaw.com. This is Tom Fox. 
Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you'll join us again tomorrow. Once again, thanks to our sponsor, Affiliated Monitors, for sponsoring this month's series. This production of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a special production of the Compliance Podcast Network. I hope you will join me again tomorrow.